Hello, Professor Toybox here, along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back for our next episode of Toybox Tutorials. Last time, we began looking at the Path Creator tool, and we used it to set up a simple two-point path here inside the well. We connected a block to that path and styled the block to look like water, and we made the block move along the path by pressing a button here. And you can see it makes it look like the water is draining. Today we're going to continue looking at the path creator, but this time I want to create a longer path with more points and show you how you can better control the movement of an object as it travels along the path. Unfortunately, I don't have a need for a path like that in my Fantasia toy box, so for today's lesson, we're going to revisit an older toy box that we haven't seen for a while. I'll load it up and meet you there in just a moment. So here we are in my Incredibles-themed toy box from my Player Battles mini-series. We have some city streets, and it looks pretty good, but except for me, there's nothing moving in this city. It'd be nice if there were some activity, and so I'm going to use the Path Creator to add a car that drives around the block. So as we start out here, we've got the Path Creator, and before we actually create the path, I just want to show you a couple of little things. So I'm going to drop a path here, and that puts us into point mode. And as you saw last time, it creates the little yellow line here that extends to the next point. So I'm going to drop a point here. And now as I move this point, you'll notice that line between the first two points is no longer straight. It's trying to fit a curve between all of the points that I'm dropping. And so that's something to be aware of, that it's going to do its best to try to create a path that connects all of the points that you drop. And most of the time it does a fairly good job, but it can be a little buggy at times, and you'll see that in a moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this because this isn't the path we're going to use, but I just wanted to show you how the uh, points work there. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a path here along the lane going around the block. So I'm going to drop the path creator tool. This is our starting point. And I want to come around the corner and then go down the street. And when we get to this corner, we want to go around this direction. and come down to this intersection, come around the corner, down over to this intersection, around this last corner, and I don't need to drop another point over here because I already have the one from the start. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out without dropping a final point. The one down there will be our final point. And we'll come over to the Path Creator tool and open the Logic menu, go into Properties, and I'm going to set the Looped flag to True, to On. And so that will close the loop and make a loop out of this path. I'm also going to turn off the Auto Start Objects when connected. And we'll exit out of that. Now we can't really see the path because of the road, so I'm going to go ahead and lift up this piece of road and you're going to see it didn't do such a good job of fitting a curve between these points. And I think part of the reason is, is because this point and the one down here are so far apart compared to this point and that point that it's, for some reason, not able to fit a nice little curve around this. And so it's trying to create a gentler curve because of that distance, and it ends up doing something kind of wonky here. And so, not to worry, we can fix that a little bit easily just by moving the points. So I'm going to select this and hit B on my Wii U to move the point, And we'll back it up here to about the corner of the building. And we'll do the same. And you can see it's already straightened this curve out a little bit. We'll do the same thing with this point. And even though, <laughs> and what's interesting is, is it snaps to the point where I want it to go. But if I don't move the point and just place it where it was, it snaps the curve back. So it's a little bit buggy. 
you have to play around with it a little bit. We'll go ahead and pick this point up and move it. And now when we drop it, that looks a little better. It's still overshooting the intersection a little bit there. So we'll move this down just a little bit further. And that's not too bad. Maybe go just a tad further. So sometimes you kind of have to play with this a little bit to get it to work the way you want. And we'll need to do this on all of these intersections because the same problem <laughs> occurred on all of them. But I'll do this offline and I'll be back in just a moment. There we go. Okay, so now we have our path and it's going around the block and the path itself looks pretty good. So next thing we're going to need are a couple of buttons that we can use to control the movement along the path. I'm going to set these down right over here. Put one here and we'll put one here. And then we're also going to need a car to attach to it. We could use a vehicle, a ground vehicle, or we can also use a decoration. And I think I'll use a decoration just for something a little different. And I'm going to drop this car right here. And I've already set the properties on the path to not auto start, so we'll come over to the car. And we'll open the logic menu and do a new path connection. So we connect that to the path. And then we'll open up the properties, and I think we should be okay with everything that's here by default. We do want to orient along the path so that the car will actually go around the corners and not kind of go sideways up the street there. And the rest of these all look fine. And then initially, let's go ahead and do what we did last time. And we'll connect up this button to the path. And we'll do a reset and play. And we'll connect this one up so that when it's pressed, come to the path and do a reset and stop. So now let's see what we've got. So we've got a car that's moving around the path. Kind of slow. But it's following along the road. And it gets to the corner, goes around the corner, and continues going slow. So that'll work, but um, there's more we can do with this to kind of control the speed of the car and make it look a little bit more realistic. So we'll come down here and hit the reset and stop button, which puts the car back over here. So one of the things we could do is change the speed on the path. We could come over here to the path creator, open up the properties, change the speed to about 200 and double it. But then the car is going to be going pretty fast around the corners, and that's not realistic either. But what you can do is come to each of the points on the path, and you can open up the logic menu for each point, come under properties, and we have a speed modifier. This is a percentage, and this is going to modify the speed of the path. So I can change this, for example, and set this to 200. So that would be 200%. And so this would be, make the speed coming through this point to be 200. And so as the car then leaves this point and moves towards this point, it's going to speed up so that it's moving at about 200 when it passes through this point, about twice as fast. And um, if the speed over on the path were 50, then leaving this set at 200 would set the speed coming through this point at 100. So that modifier is a percentage. So we could leave this one again set at 100, so it'll be the same speed as the rest of the path. And we can come over to this one and modify this speed so that again it accelerates after it comes around the corner. We'll set that to 200. 
And then again, this one would be okay. We would set this point to be 200 and double the speed of the path. And the same thing for this point. And so you can modify the speed of the objects connected to the path so that they're going faster or slower at certain points along the path. So now let's see what we've got. We'll come back here and, whoa, <laughs> hit the button. And so now it comes around the corner and it speeds up. And that's a little bit more realistic. And as it comes down the road, now it's starting to slow down as it reaches the corner. And it slows down around the corner and speeds up as it heads off down the street. So that looks better already. And all we had to do was change the modifier for the speed at certain points along the path. So that looks pretty good, but I think we can do a little bit better. Now, one of the things before we do that, let me go ahead and stop and reset. One of the things is, is you can set that modifier percentage on every point around the path except for the starting point. And so if we were to come to the starting point and set the speed on here, for example, and change this to the, be the maximum of 300, then coming around the corner, this would modify that by 200%, so it'd be moving at 600 as it comes around here. And let's say I wanted this thing to be moving at eh, 300 or 600 all around the whole track. If I change the modifier on every point, I can't change it on this start point. And so it'll be moving at 600 everywhere until it comes back to the start point and then it slows down. So if you wanted it moving at 600 around the entire path, what you could do instead of modifying the points is you come to the car and you go under properties, toy box path, and for the speed here, this is a modifier as well. And so if I were to set the speed of the car here at 200 and leave all of the points on the path set at 100, then the car would be moving at 200 around the entire path. And so that's a way you can get consistent speed around the entire path. So a couple of options. Again, you can modify individual points along the path to apply a modifier to the speed. That works for every point except the starting point. You can also modify the speed of the object on the path and make it go faster or slower. So that's good. All right. Now, to be a little bit more realistic, it'd be nice if the car actually stopped at the corner before it went around the corner. The driver kind of looked both ways. And to do that, we can't do it by connecting to the path itself. And so I'm going to come into each of the buttons and I'm going to delete this link. And I'm going to come over here to this button and delete that link. And instead of connecting to the path creator, what we can do is on a new logic connection on the button, when pressed, instead of coming to the path creator, we come to the object on the path. And you'll notice the logic menu is available here. So I can open that up and toy box path and I can have the button start the car moving. I can do the same reset and stop on an individual object on the path. So if I have multiple objects on this path, I can control each one separately. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a start. So pushing this button will start the object moving along the path. And for our reset button, we'll come over here and when pressed, I'll come to the car and do a reset and stop. And I found that it's usually good if you're going to connect to the object to make it move, that you would do that consistently. And so while I could have attached this button and left it attached to the path creator to do the reset and stop, I found that it's good if you're gonna control it at the object level versus the path level and control the movement that way, it's good to do it consistently at the object level. And so now this will start the car moving along the path. And it'd be nice if when it gets to this point at the intersection, it stops. And so you'll notice the logic menu is available for this point. 
and we can do a new logic connection when the point is reached by the object on the path we can come over to our object on the path our car toy box path and tell it to stop and at that point it'll actually stop and I can do that for all of the intersections but let's go ahead and see what this looks like so now we come over here and press the button it starts moving it goes around the corner and accelerates and as it approaches the intersection it slows down and it stops so that's really good uh, one problem though you probably notice <laughs> is how do we get the car moving again well all we need for that is another logic connection and so we'll come back over to the creativa toys drawer and we'll need one more toy that we've already looked at in the past a few times and that would be a time delayer so I'm going to scroll over here to the left and find the time delayer I don't know if it would have been faster to go to the right or not, but here we go. And we'll go ahead and drop this here. And I'm going to set the properties on the time delayer. I'm not sure one second looks too realistic, so we'll make it two seconds. And so now we come to the point, and we'll do a new logic connection. So when again the point is reached by the object on the path, it's already stopping the car. We'll go ahead and start the time delayer. And then on a new logic connection on the time delayer, when the delay is completed, we'll come over to the car and open the toy box path and tell it to start. So we'll come back over here to our buttons and we'll go ahead and reset. That'll put the car here. And so now we press the button. The car goes around the corner and accelerates. Gets down here to the end of the street. And it stops. And you'll notice it kicked off the time delayer. The time delayer goes off and the car starts moving again. So you can see that by making logic connections to the object on the path rather than the path itself, and by manipulating the points along the path, we've been able to make the car move in a fairly realistic way, and it wasn't too difficult. Next time, we'll try adding a pedestrian on the sidewalk, and I'll show you some other things you can do with the Path Creator tool. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching and for your comments and feedback on this series so far. I'm doing these tutorials for you, so it's nice to know they're appreciated. If you like Disney Infinity, don't forget to sign up on my blog or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that, so you don't miss the next lesson. Until then, take care.